So in our last video, we created a VBA script that would export a single Excel table from our workbook into a PowerPoint presentation that we had created. And so naturally, the next question is, okay, well, what happens if we're in a case that we have multiple Excel tables? So how would that script look? And how do we have to build our script to, you know, export multiple Excel tables? And so that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to build a script that's going to do that. The first part is we're going to assume that we have multiple Excel tables that exist on a single worksheet. And then in the second part, we're going to assume that we have multiple Excel tables that are spread out across an entire workbook. Now, in my workbook, I already have some Excel tables. So I'm on tables one, that worksheet. I've got two tables. And then on tables two, that worksheet, I've got another two tables. And right now, I want to just export these two. So the ones that are on tables one. So let's write a script that's going to do that. Let's go into our VBA editor. And if you've watched the other videos, uh, one thing that we have to do always when we're working with PowerPoint object variables is we have to create a reference to the PowerPoint object library. And so how we do that is we're going to go to tools. So right up here at top in the ribbon bar, go down to references. And then because I've used this library in other videos, I already have mine enabled. But if you don't, you just need to scroll down, down to M for Microsoft and then P. <clears throat> and then you're going to find the PowerPoint one and you're going to check that box. And once it's checked, it means it's enabled. You might see a different number here. I'm on Excel 2016, I guess 2019 now. So uh, we have access to the latest library, which is the 16 library. If you're on 13, so Excel 2013, you're going to see PowerPoint 15. And if you're on Excel 2010, you're going to see uh, Excel um, PowerPoint 14. So you just check it, press OK, and now we can start writing our subroutine. So I'm going to say subroutine, so it's export multiple tables to PowerPoint, put an underscore, and I'm going to put worksheet, just so I know this only does for one worksheet going to declare some PowerPoint object variables. So these will house different PowerPoint objects. The first one is called PPT app. And this will house our PowerPoint application. So just like Excel is an application, PowerPoint is an application. We have to create an object variable that will house that application. And then we're going to have a presentation within our application. So Naturally, we need to declare a presentation object. And then we're going to have slides in our presentation. So we need to create a slide object variable, and that's PowerPoint.slide. And then we're going to declare Excel variables. And the first one, well, this one's going to be called Excel table. This is going to be a list object. So funny thing, <laughs> a list object is just an Excel table. So it's a range that we convert to a table. And with tables, we can customize the design. We can filter them. Um, we can, you know, it's basically, they're just easier to work with than normal Excel ranges. And they're a little bit more optimized. And for the longest time, I was wondering, I was like, why do we call it a list object? Like, that just doesn't sound intuitive. <laughs> And then I looked online and there's actually a, a variable, an object variable in, in the VBA model that is called the table object. But that table object is related to Power Pivot. And so if you have a table in Power Pivot and you export that table to an Excel workbook, uh, that's considered a table object within the VBA object model. So just a little fun fact. Next thing we're gonna declare is called a slide index. And this is just gonna be an integer. So that's going to be an integer variable. After we do all that, we need to create a new instance of PowerPoint because by default, we don't see it. And how we do that is we're going to take that PPT app. We're going to set that equal to a new PowerPoint application. And then we want to make sure that we can see the application. So we want to take the application object. We want to set the visible property of that object variable equal to true. So keep in mind though, 
It just makes sure we can see it. It's not going to make it the first window. So if we wanted to make it the main window in our script, we would have to do another one called activate. So we have to actually activate our, uh, our PowerPoint. But I try to stay away from activating anything. I just like to make sure we can see it because um, usually when we activate stuff, it can sometimes slow down our scripts. And so after we've done that, we want to create a new presentation within the application. And so how we do that is we're going to take a PPT Prez object. We're going to say, hey, using the PPT app object, go to the presentations collection that belongs with that application. And we're going to call the add method. And so this will add a new presentation to our application. And it's going to live within our presentations collection. And once we've done that, we're going to write one more line of code before we get into the fun stuff. And we're going to say, create a slide incrementer. That's even a word, incrementer. Yeah. And so that one, we're just going to take that slide index variable we declared up above, and we're going to set that equal to one. And we'll see why that's important later in the script. Now the fun part. Loop through all the Excel tables. I'll call them list objects just to be consistent. All the list objects in the active worksheet. That is very, very important to understand. So wherever we run this script, it will only export the tables on the active worksheet. So I currently have tables one as my active worksheet. So it's only going to export the ones that are on tables one. If you were intending for it to do on, on tables two, for example, then I would have to select this one. Again, it's all about what your intention is, but it's important to know how this script will run and how we're writing it. We're going to only reference the active worksheet that we're on. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say for each Excel table in active sheet dot list objects. So the list objects collection that has all the list object as a group. So it's a group of all of our list objects and each worksheet has a collection of all the Excel tables or the list objects on it. And so what we're saying is loop through each one of those Excel tables. Well, what are we doing when we reach an Excel table? Well, we want to copy the Excel table. And so what we're going to do is say, hey, using the Excel table, we're going to call the range property. And then we're going to call the copy method on that Excel range property. The Excel range property just basically means what range does our Excel table take up? Well, in this case, my first table takes up the range B2 to D5. And then my second one, it takes a range from F2 to H5. So all it's saying is, hey, copy that range to the clipboard. And then from there, we want to create a new slide, set the layout, and paste the Excel table on the slide. So we first need to create the new slide. And so we're going to set the PPT slide equal to PPT.Prez dot slide, so the slides collection that belongs to our presentation, we want to call the add method, not the add slide, the add method. I'm going to pass through my slide index, and I'm going to set my layout equal to blank. And then so naturally people kind of ask slide index. So it's one. Why do we set it like that? Well, I have a question. If I export it right now, what slide will this one be on? And what slide will that one be on? Let's see. I've got to finish up my script first. So I'm going to say, hey, PPT slide, referencing the shapes collection, paste that Excel table 
in that slide. And then we're going to go to our next Excel table. So again, the question is, which slide will this one be on and which one will that be on? It's very important because this is going to explain why we're putting that there. So let's run it as is. Hmm. Okay. So my first table, my orange one is on my second slide. And then my green one, my second table is on my first slide. Hmm. That might be okay. In some situations, that's fine. That's totally okay. That's what well, that was our intent. But in our situation, that's not our intent. Our intent was we want this one to be on our first slide. And then this one to be on our second slide. And so what we have to do is we have to be able to change the slide index number depending on which object we're on. And so how we do that is we increment it before we go to the next object, increment slide index. And so what I do is I take the slide index and then just add one to it. So on the first one, I'm saying, okay, add a slide and then set that position to one. And then when you loop through again, our slide index will no longer equal one, it will equal two. So when I say add a new slide, now I'm saying add that slide, but now add it to position two. Before I added this line, it was still position one. So what happens then is whatever was in the old position one now becomes position two, and that new slide becomes position one. And what I want to be able to do is say, hey, when you add a new slide, I want it to be the last slide in my presentation. So that's all that's doing. It's just allowing it so that way when we add a new slide, it's setting it as the last slide in our presentation. So now if we run it, we should get something a little bit more of what we're expecting. Oh, good. So now the first one, our first table is on our first slide, and then our second one is on our second slide, just like we wanted. Okay. So in this example, we were working on a single worksheet. Naturally, we're going to progress into, well, what if we want to do both worksheets? Well, the nice thing is we can leverage almost our entire code. We just got to change a couple of lines. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to copy that one. And I'm just going to change this one to workbook. I'm going to put in one more object variable. I'm going to call that worksheet. And that is going to be a worksheet object in Excel. And then from there, I'm going to create another loop. And this loop is we're going to loop through all the worksheets in the active workbook. Again, most of the time it doesn't matter, but you do need to understand the way we're writing this code, we're specifying the active workbook. So if you were to have multiple workbooks open, you would want to make sure that you run this script on the workbook that you want to export the list objects from. And that needs to be your active workbook, or in other words, the one when I go to Excel is my active window when I open it. And so what I want to do is I want to say for each worksheet in worksheets. And so worksheets, that's a collection that belongs to a workbook. And all it means is it's just saying, hey, all the worksheets in our workbook, I want to loop through them all. And what I do is when I'm on a worksheet, I then want to loop through all of the list objects on that worksheet. So what I need to do is I've got to change this line of code because it's no longer the active sheet. It's the worksheet that we're currently on in our loop. So if I'm on worksheet one in the loop, I want it to export from the worksheet one. And then if I'm on the worksheet two, I want it to export from the worksheet two. And then I want to go to the next worksheet. Now, technically you could have left it as active sheet, but then you would have had to add another line where it would be worksheet.activate. Here's my problem with that. I don't like activating anything in my loops because it tends to slow it down. And if we want, you know, fast loops that are efficient, I try to remove the activates 
all the time because they'll just slow things down and then your windows changing and things can happen and then the other problem is well then your active window might change and so it's really important to understand that which part in your loop where you are in the active window it, it can throw things off and so i i tend to prefer to stay away from that again you can do it but then you would have to add an extra line where you're saying worksheet.activate and then you could have left this as the active sheet because you've now activated the sheet that you're on in the loop. So let's see what we get now. Perfect. So we got table one here, table two, table three, and table four. It came out just like we wanted. So that's great. Again, we didn't change our code that much. We just added another loop and we basically added another variable. So there wasn't much we changed, but again, we made it much more dynamic now. So again, it's kind of building off these kind of core things. Hopefully you're seeing a pattern with this. Like, you know, when we're working with variables, or sorry, object variables, we don't have to necessarily change much. It just means that we have to kind of think about like, okay, how is everything structured in this object model? You know, and you're starting to realize there's a hierarchy here. You know, it's, it's an application, then you've got a workbook, then you've got a worksheet and then you've got a range or you've got objects. And then from there, you've got an application for PowerPoint, you've got presentations, and then you've got a slide and then you've got shapes within those slides. So there's definitely a hierarchy there. That pretty much concludes this video. So again, if you have any comments or questions, you know, please ask them below. I'll try to answer them for you. Or even, you know, if you have a recommendation for another video, I'm all open to suggestions because as much as I like to think I can come up with all the ideas, I know I can't, so I'm all open to suggestions, um, you know, and I'll make sure to kind of make sure you get crammed back. Hey, look who uh, came up with this great idea. But uh, yeah, that concludes this video. So, uh, you know, also if you can uh, like and subscribe, that definitely helps out a lot too. But uh, thanks for watching.